Well, good evening. Welcome to 100% LCFC. We are live right here on Facebook with the Leicester City fanzine. You can say what you want to say about Leicester City. Loads and loads and loads of stuff to talk about. Jamie Vardy, Strikers, Claude Puel and more. This is the Fan Zone. Get your comments in and we'll be live in 60 seconds. Yes, good evening and welcome to the Fan Zone with myself, Phil. Welcome to 100% LCFC. Uh, James Hall is saying this is going to be interesting. I think actually it is going to be an interesting show tonight, James. Hi to uh, James Hall. Steve Toon, how are you, Steve? Good to hear from you. Tony Burley, hello. Uh, Sam Perkins, hi to Sam, how are you? Let us know your views. Uh, MTS is saying nice new background. Thanks, MTS, for that. We're always trying to improve things. Jason Mills, good evening to you, Jason. Get your views in, get your comments in. We don't always agree with each other, do we? But that's what makes us fans. If we were down the pub, we'd have a good debate, but we'd keep it clean and tidy. And at the end, we would all buy each other a beer, wouldn't we? So hi to everybody who's watching Julie Field, MTS, Baz Short, loads and loads of people. If you can do us a favour, if you can like and share the video, that would be absolutely brilliant as ever. Um, and don't forget to subscribe to 100% LCFC uh, live videos. Jamie did a fantastic show yesterday. Uh, Mark Stevenson is saying, where do we start? I absolutely agree with you, Mark. Where do we start? Do you want to talk about strikers? Do you want to talk about formations? Do you want to be talking about Claude Puel or not? You put in your comments. Let us know. Yes, Jason, say it would be boring. Of course, it would be boring if we all agreed. Like I say, we're not an official media outlet. We are fans. We're allowed to talk about what you want to talk about. And here's one. James Hall is saying, what's happening with Nacho? Uh, they're not the striker for Leicester. We need something else. I think basically James Hall is saying that Nacho doesn't seem to be cooking the mustard for us at Leicester. I'm going to bring in. I've got, don't forget, you can click on the link at any point. You can put and let us know what you think and you can join the video just as tom has done here i'm going to bring tom in and neil's joined in as well now so here they go tom can you hear me evening phil evening everyone hi tom you're quite quiet so if you could just talk really loud <laughs> that's all right mate no problem how are you tom what do you feel you want to talk about to start with everybody saying need a striker in january bring back barnes bring back slimani where do we start tom Oh, you can, it's all linked into one, really. But, uh, the striking problems and the formations and tactics, it's quite simple. We haven't got the striker at the club to play one up front. Vardy is a not really a back-to-goal striker. Nacho is not a back-to-goal striker. O Okazaki is a link-up man for the strikers, so not really someone that gets in the box enough. Uh, and then <laughs> that's really about it for the strikers who have got, currently got at the club. You've got Samani on loan at Fernabachi that probably is looking at Leicester thinking, why didn't you put all these crosses in the box when I was playing? <laughs> and yeah. it's probably a bit of everything at the moment. Nacho, I feel a bit sorry for. Uh, he's not a back to goal, you know, back to goal striker. He wants the ball in the box. He's a, a front man to play with it too. Uh, and I think that's all we've got up front at the moment. People who want to play as a partnership. And, People can slate Nacho for the last few weeks. There is a player in there who has got some quality about him. We have seen the quality coming out. The West Brom performance away last season, the ball through tomorrow is a little flick. The goal at Tottenham at the end of the season, the rifled it in from 25, 35 yards out into the top corner. So he knows how to score goals. The moment of time, his confidence is shot. And we're not playing to the best of his ability. What isn't what he's been asked to do with holding the ball up and bringing others into play as much. Yes, Tom. I mean, 
I'm going to bring Neil in now as well. Bring Neil into the broadcast. Like I say, if you want to click on the link, lots of people. Let's read out a few comments. Uh, Stephen Moult is saying need a striker in January, um, and he would bring back Barnes. Somebody from 100% OS Dipak saying Radio Leicester pretty much concluded that none of the our strikers fit the manager's system. Let that sink in for a minute. Um, that's interesting. Uh, Mark Stevenson is saying spineless, not fearless, so no plan whatsoever. We need slim back desperately. Vardy can't do it on his own. I'm going to chuck that out there. That's going to be the next topic. Slimani, question mark. And you know, like I've said, guys, I'm not Slimani's biggest fan at all. I was slating him, I'll be honest. But I, I said at the time, he's, be he's better than no plan B, Neil, or not. Would you have Slimani back, Neil? I wouldn't. Um, even then, even I know we've got the issues we've got at the moment, I think we have to change more formation. And, and I get with having a big man, and especially with all Brighton, it'd be great. But the amount of chances that Slimani misses, it, it's, it, it's painful. It's woeful at times. I remember him just getting his feet wrong in the, bit, in the middle of the box. You're thinking somebody, that, the £30 million striker that's messing it up. And if he can't score in Fenerbahce, and he's doing a bad job there, and apparently, apparently, according to reports, Leicester are going, oh, we don't kind of want him back. You can kind of keep him for a bit longer, and then we'll see what we can do with him. But I, I, can, I can see us getting somebody else in in January, but not Slimani for me. I, even, I know what you're saying, and it'll be a different option, but I just, just can't see it. He's just not good enough for our squad. I just genuinely think so. Tom, what's your views on Slimani? Depending where the club finances lay, if they've got the money to go and splash the cash for a, a top quality goal scorer, go and do it. If we haven't, then use a bot, you know, get the release clause, bring back Slimani as a plan B, because at the moment, the only other option we've got is to play someone like a baller up front who's done it for Seville a little bit. But by that, we haven't got a plan B. The other option is to change formation. What we have probably have got the players to play, and that is to go to a 3 5 2, what a lot of fans have yeah. been crying out for the season to start. And maybe we'd see the best of Natural and Vardy as a partnership up front with Madison in behind. The only option then you'd say is the likes of Gray or Brighton wouldn't be playing as often because you don't need the wingers. You play full uh, wing backs, what Ricardo is, and Chilwell can be. Um, uh, Tom said there, and I'm going to read out a few comments, but I'm going to come back to you guys and ask you. Tom saying, uh, and you're saying bring Slimani back as a plan B. We're struggling with a plan A at the moment when Vardy's not fit. We haven't got a plan A starting striker, if you ask me. Here are some comments anyway. Um, Vichai and Top selected Puel and approved the team. Good enough for them, good enough for me. That's absolutely fine, Steve. Um, the manager has said, this is somebody from the 100% team, I'm not sure who said this, but somebody's commented saying, manager has said there won't be any signings in January. Although if you ask me, that's what all managers say to try and put people off the scent. Mm -hmm. um, James Hall says, excuse my French, but Nacho is, and I'm not going to say it, but if we won at Fulham, it would took the sting out of Saturday's game. It wouldn't have minded, but Fulham games were the ones to need. I agree. I think a lot of fans were frustrated after the Fulham game. Um, Reese Taylor saying he'd take an unsettled Moriarty at £60 million. I can't see Leicester spending £60 million. Anthony Howard has got a shout. He's saying Salah from Nantes to come in. Dan Hall is, is disagreeing and saying Slimani is not the answer. He's not having a great time on loan to the point that they don't want to keep him for the season. So lots and lots of different views coming out of there, guys. Uh, start with you, Neil. Let, let's let's guess that Vardy might not well be fit for Saturday. Who on earth do you start up top for us with the hope of getting a goal at Crystal Palace, who aren't any great shakes at the moment, are there for the taking, I would think, Neil. So who would you start as our strikers? Yes, not picking from a great bunch, are we? Yeah, it's either it's, you're gonna ha you have to start with a striker because. And that would that would be the, a quite a well thing to do is start with four strike four wingers um play two up front. But um I think you'd have to go I think you'd go Okazaki and then Nacho seems quite good as an impact sub to kind of come on afterwards after about sixty minutes and he kind of chases the game around a lot more. Um so I'd give but I just I think I'd have to just change the formation and just play a, if I was me, play a three five two. Um, as Tom was saying, I think that'd be really useful with Madison in behind, kind of supporting two strikers, uh, maybe 
with like Okazaki alongside him and then Nacho up front. So they can kind of interloop and swap around with two wingers coming around the sides and then maybe play like an Ibora and either Midian, um, Mendy or Ndidi. And I don't think Ndidi's been that great, to be honest, to, um, recently in the last few games. But yeah, I think that's the only way you can see it working in this current state because playing this one up top, it's, it's, we can all see it's just the, the striker's not getting any service. Um, nothing's really happening up front, to be honest. And there's plenty of good stuff happening from the forwards back, forwards and the midfielders, so the defence and the midfield and stuff. But the only way forward is to play with this, with the current Vardy situation, is to play um, two, two up front, or at least not no one up front at all. So, yeah, it would be a change of formation for me. Tom, how would you set it up on Saturday? Uh, I mean, firstly, we're going into a game at Palace where, let's remember, Zaha is suspended after being uh, his fifth yellow card. Tom Kinsey is now suspending after getting booked in the tunnel, I hear, after the game, uh, after having a go at the referee. So he's got his fifth yellow card now at the game. So we're going there to a Palace team who were weakish with some injuries, or even weaker now. So we should be going there with a lot of confidence that they haven't got their main player going up against our back four, what's massive, really, considering we lack pace half the time at the back. And we're going up against uh, probably losing their best centre half in Tompkins. Look, we won't change shape going to this game. For me, you've got to keep playing Nacho. You've got to give him a bit of confidence. I was appalled by to hear some of our fans thought it was right to cheer Nacho off the pitch because he's being subbed. This lad's 21, 22. That's not going to do his confidence any good in you know the space of the matter. You've got to keep playing him. You know we're we're doing it for Jill. We're doing it for Madison, and they make a mistake. No one gets on their back. But Nacho at the moment, he seems to be the new Andy King. Makes one mistake, oh, we'll have a go at him. Let's go to Fulham game and look at the chances. Wes Morgan should have scored a simple header at the back post. He headed it over the crossbar. No one's got Wes's back for having missing the chance. Nacho went through a goal. Yeah, he missed it. But at least he got into that position. If he wasn't in those positions, I'd be a bit more upset about it. But at the moment, we're not playing to his strength. And if we can get into the box more... And look for the little balls across the box. Nacho will get these tappings because that's what he did at Man City. I know they're a better team for getting into the box and carrying these half chances. But Nacho's taken a lot of stick for me unfairly when you know what, he hasn't played that regular for Leicester City over the year, year and a half he's been here. So to cheer him up after, on Saturday night, well, I thought it was appalling from some of our fans. And we should be backing him. Look at, look at the chairman uh, we sadly lost. He brought him fuel to give him an opportunity. Uh, Puel is the manager's football club and he will not be going anywhere well while we're ninth in the Premier League and into the quarterfinals of the Cup. So I think we should just get behind Puel. He's, he has taken a lot of stick in the last week or two. And everyone seems to forget he's, he's steered this ship through one of the hardest points in the club's history. But we're, we're quick to forget about that and he's probably still steering these players through the hardest point. I read the piece from Madison about Jamie Redknapp that they did this week with Madison. And he said the sadness through the club and to see players like Casper Schmeichel and Vardy in tears coming into training some days. You know, he's still steering these players through a hard time. So we need to start backing the lads, backing Puel, just till the end of the season. Top will make a decision what right for the football club then. To go into a game on Saturday, like, it feels like we're putting pressure on the team even more. We're not in, we're not in the relegation zone. So let's back what they're doing. Yeah, I'm going to read out a few comments and I'll come back to you guys. Um, Shawnee B is saying we're not playing to his strengths is because Puel making changes left, right and centre. Although, Shawnee, I think quite a few of those those changes come through because of the injury situation that we've got. A few injuries gone on there and a few red cards over the season for Leicester as well. Nacho made a few silly mistakes. He can't turn with the ball, says Joanna Astley. D- Defoe on loan, maybe, says Andy Medhurst. I could, I could imagine us getting a player in on loan in January. It's not a great window to try and buy somebody. Uh, Nacho's had too much of a chance, saying Sean. Anthony Howard is agreeing with what Tom's saying, saying there is a good player somewhere in there with Nacho. He just needs some support. Uh, I think, guys, and I'll come to you, Neil, Nacho definitely needs, surely needs Okazaki playing up with him, doesn't he, Neil? If he's going to be a starting striker, he's got to have somebody as part of a two here, Nacho. Yeah, and I think that was our point. Uh, but yeah, again, back to what Tom was saying, he's 22 years old and 
if what do you, you can't expect the world from him and maybe we've been spoiled with the likes of Madison that's come in that's just hit the ground running like nobody's ever seen before at such a young age um, like new to the Premier League and stuff and Nacho is young and he, he will get there and you can see that he's not a complete waste there is talent in the boy and it will come out it will just have to take time and again that's like a lot of the players in our squad and this is what happens when you've got well, as manager, we've got a lot of players that have come in, um, maybe not played Premier League experience, maybe a very young age. That, like for example, Soyuncu with the with the tackle against Fulham that let lends the goal, he'll learn from that. You'll you'll, you'll just you'll just sense that. So he won't, probably won't go to ground as easy next time. But in the case of Nacho, it will it will come, but we just need to give it time. It's not what he expects and. What it is at the moment is when he's on his own, he kind of just looks lost. He's just kind of like, well, what do I do? Where do I go? Um, well, yeah. And he's not too sure what's going on. But I think if we give him the trust, you give him the formation, you give him the confidence of, right, we're going to bench some players and build a team around you, as we've done previously for Vardy, because essentially the team is built around him when he plays. So, But it's not quite built in the same way for Ian Acho. So if we kind of do that and kind of form it a bit more, we we could do really good things, and it would relieve the pressure from him from Puel a little bit in regards to the pressure from the fans. But overall, yeah, he's only, he's he's still young. He's still got plenty of opportunities, plenty of plenty of potential. There's a reason why he came through the Man City team, and the reason why okay they might have got rid of him, but he came through that system, and that system is one of the hardest in the world, one of the best in the world as well. Um, but. Yeah, there is definitely pressure there. There's definitely potential there that we can utilise. I mean, Tom, coming over to you, Anthony Howard says, and I think a lot of fans, this is what frustrates a lot of fans about Nacho, is Anthony says, for me, the most frustrating thing about Nacho is his effort or the appearance of his effort, I would say. He is one of those players who can look, I'm going to use the word lazy, I'm not saying he is lazy, but he can look disinterested, Tom. What do, you know? Can you see where some fans are coming through with Nacho? Yeah, of course, I can I'm not, I'm not going to deny there is times where you look at him and think uh, he looks lazy, he looks sluggish when he doesn't get the ball near him or the ball's five yards, and probably that's where Vardy would go and chase it down. Sadly, that's not Nacho's game. Nacho's game is not running in behind for a ball over the top because he hasn't got the pace of Vardy. If you look at it in that way, Nacho's game is not running deep and try and turn a man and run at players. Nacho's ability is that he links up with a, a man in the box or the strike partner to cause, you know, movement to mayhem and then get on the tappings. I'm, I'm really sorry. That's what he is. He's a, he's a fox in the box striker. He will pop up and score goals in the box. He's not going to run around like headless chicken like we've had for Vardy and what we love about Vardy. It's the same as you, you, can, you can look at it this way. Vardy is not the same as Nacho. They do completely the opposite. Claude Puel and Claudio Ranieri are completely the opposite. One's got charisma and, you know, lights at the camera in the press conference. One is very just, I'm here to manage the football club and I'm trying my best and this is how we're going to do it. So you all get, we're all going to have different type of players. I agree the effort sometimes frustrates you, but I think we're just not playing to his strengths at the moment. I just feel it's quick enough to get on people's backs, you know, to blame one player. Yeah, I've got to read a few comments and come back to you guys. Um, Martin Lewitt says Kane was young when he was on loan at Leicester and he was nothing special and look at him now. Uh, just saying, which I think is a fair comment. It's an interesting one from Martin. Um, Steve Mardi saying if supporters supported Nacho, he would replay the Flans. Um, Sam is saying we were lacking more than a striker on Saturday. We had no pressure, passion or desire. A good spell in the first half was an anti-climax. Um, somebody, I can't quite see the comment in it. I'll try and get it up on screen while I'm, I'm looking for it. But somebody put a comment in there, guys, and I'll start with you on this, Tom. Is we bought, we bought three centre backs in the summer. I am going to talk about summer transfers. Sure. We bought three centre backs. That was interesting. We've loaned one out. So Yunku don't really want to play. We then striker wise sold Musa, loaned out Ujoa and Slimani on the end of the day. Tom, it's a strange bit of business in the end, some of those summer dealings, wasn't it? Three centre-backs, get rid of three strikers and rely on Okazaki, who I think last year we could see is getting... He's not a goal machine. 
Well, what do you think, Tom? He's never been a goal machine knocker, Zaki. Let's be honest with that. The striking options, Musa, he was never going to play. He was never in his favour when he was at the club, simple as that. And I don't think he fitted the way he wanted to play the systems with wingers and he wasn't always going to work hard enough and get into the team. So Leo wanted to leave and fair play. He wanted to go and play regular football. The surprise was letting out go Slomani. I felt it the summer, not me personally, I think Pure felt that Nacho had quite a good pre-season if we're looking back. Yeah, he did. And it was four in seven games. So probably felt Nacho was going to be that second major striker who was going to score goals in the Premier League. No, he scored two very good goals away against uh, Lille. I think it was the final pre-season game, one of the final one, two good headers. And we all thought, OK, do you know what? Yeah, he's going to be that plan B. It hasn't quite worked out. The three centre arms, well, we need to cover. We, we Robert Hooth left the football club. Uh, we then brought in two young players, Sainshu and Begvich, who's gone to Celtic. I think it's brilliant. He's learning his game up there, and by the sound of it, he's, he's, uh, he's tearing up trees every week in that division. But let's not get carried away. It's Scottish football. It it's a Scottish there. Sunday League division, isn't it, up there, Tom? It let's be there. honest. It's not the hardest game to go and play every week in, week out. So, but he's getting some stiff competition, probably better in the Europe for Celtic. We then brought in Johnny Evans, so I think we needed some more experience at the back to go with Maguire, Morgan and Sinchu. We've been unlucky with injuries as well, and I think you've got to look at that. I mean, if you look at it, Morgan get there, Maguire getting injured against Cardiff, he probably still would have been in that back four with Morgan, and Sinchu probably wouldn't have played as many games as he has. Or Morgan might have not played as many games as he has, and Sinchu might have got a bit more of a run out than Evans. I think if you look at it, our strongest partnership at the moment has been someone playing with uh, Johnny Evans. I think Johnny Evans has been a rock the last four or five games. And whoever he's played with at the back has done a very good job there. Uh, it, again, at the weekend, who brings in? There's a question for the fans. Who plays with Maguire? If you want Maguire to play, who plays at the back? Johnny Evans, Sayo Shu or Morgan? Yeah, it's a good question. If Assuming Morgan will come and get straight back in the team, which you'd have to think he would do, wouldn't you, Neil? Yeah, I guess so. I think another point, this is my kind of theory on um, why we brought in Benkovic as well. I think that because of the rumours about Manu, I think Manu, I think they were w- willing to sell uh, Maguire to Manu for 75 and Benkovic was going to be the replacement, but Maguire never really went. So the idea was is that Benkovic came in, he realised, ah, this is not the replacement and Maguire is still here. So that's why they sent him out on loan. So I do think he's one for the future. and I do think he's got some talent. But I, if you look at the stature, you look at the build, you look at how he's positioned and you look at our defenders, he's, ex- he's very similar to a Maguire type. So that's the reason why I thought we, we bought him. And yeah, we've got a lot of um, centre-backs, but I'd rather have too, ma- too many than too little. Because at the end of the day, we've got I think Bella and Lyon, who I don't really want anywhere near the first team, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, then yeah, Morgan has been playing pretty well this season. Um, Evans has been, it was, looks a bit shaky at the beginning and I wasn't too sure why we, we paid the money, but now we can see he's brilliant. And also one thing he can do that I think that separates him from the other play, the other defenders, he can put a really good Danny Jinkwater-esque long ball in, not particularly for Vardy, but for a winger like Chilwell or a winger like Ricardo to run up the side, then get it into Vardy. So it's another way, it's another dimension to our play. But he, he's a very tall, very kind of athletic centre-back, even for somebody his age, and he can work the ball quite well. Um, yeah, I can see. So, yeah, that's my theory on, on the bank of it situation and, and the centre-back. And But to, to be fair, we've got a solid through through from one to the next. Whoever would start, you wouldn't be too disappointed, um, which is really good to see. And it means that we've got a really good squad depth throughout all of in regards to all the centre-backs in a certain part, which I think the club need credit for because it could have turned out a lot worse and we've invested wisely in a Premier League experienced person, two young people that are, are, look like they're going to be brilliant prospects for the future. Tom, I'm going to just swing that conversation there. It's, it's part of the issue that we're playing effectively a, co- a midfield combination that's been normally Mendy and then Diddy, very defensive. Ibora's come in and again is on the defensive side. Tom, here you go. Neil mentioned Danny Drinkwater, who's doing nothing at Chelsea, and I'm sure would come back to Leicester in a heartbeat on loan in January. We know Thread's a great ball through and can create dramatic counter-attacking, fast-playing football. Isn't Danny Drinkwater exactly the sort of player who would help people like Nacho 
and Okazaki and Vardy get more chances? Oh, definitely. I mean, for me, it was sad to let Danny go in some ways. I mean, again, it was £30 million for the football club. He wanted to go and prove himself at a top four club and fair play to him. We can't, you know, deny him that opportunity. Uh, we thought we had a very good replacement in Adrian Silva and suddenly it really hasn't worked out for him yet. I don't know why, but he just doesn't fit the style what Pure wants to play. He's again, he's another player that came in under Craig Shakespeare, but never got to play under Craig Shakespeare. So he was a bit hard done by there. Uh, Drinkwater, we know what we're going to get. He's, he's a very good pass of the ball from short to long. He makes things happen in the blink of an eye because he knows where the Vardy runs. He also knows where Albrighton was and grey so yeah the, the opportunity was to bring him back but again it would have to be on the case that we have to move some of these players out I mean I felt sorry for our ball at the weekend you know at the first 20 minutes I actually thought we were the better team and we got more chances of going forward fair play when you got a manager like Pochettino he could read what was happening and he just told Dali Ali to go and stand on him he told Dali Ali go and stand on Ibora and stop him getting the ball as soon as he did that we didn't know what to do and Ibora couldn't get any space to get the passing going what they were, we were trying to do for so me, if you can get rid of Matty James, Andy King, uh, Adrian Silva, and then you look at bringing in someone like Drinkwater, I mean, you say that's three out and one in, but at the moment we're so overloaded in that midfield area. That is probably where you could get rid of some of the wage structure out of the, cl- cl- the club and bring in one man to do the job we're, we're, we're looking for. Would you have Drinky back? Yeah, Drinky back, mate. Drinky back N- and we're into three. Neil, would you have Drinky back? I would do, yeah, but in a, in the similar way to what Tom said, I'd have him back only if we could get rid of a few players as well um, in the midfield. I'm going to read out a few of the fans' comments here because not everybody wants Drinky back, which is which is fine. Um, Neil Bennett is saying Drinky loan, yes, but not, but by no, which I agree. I think I think we could have him back on loan because I think I think Chelsea would gladly offload him now and I, I would gladly take Drinkwater back. Steve Mardy disagrees though, saying Danny Drinkwater no thanks, that's been replaced by Albrighton. Um, okay, I don't agree with that, I think Albrighton's a completely different player to Danny Drinkwater. Drinkwater burnt his bridges, this is what quite a few Leicester fans uh, go on about, Drinkwater burnt his bridges with us, took the greedy option again, I, that's fine, Neil if you want to, that's your opinion, my my opinion is he did what every single football player does, which is if they're offered a better deal with more money, they generally take it, they'll take the biggest pay packet they can, and who would blame them, because if somebody wants to pay me more for doing what I do I'd probably take it as well, Michael Geddes is saying bring back Drinky um, Mick Padgett is saying Drinky took bad advice, I'd take him back, so Lots of different things. Quite, it's nearly nine o'clock, guys. I don't know where this half hour's shot through. We've barely touched on Palace. Uh, score predictions as ever for Saturday. Goodness only knows what the team's going to be. I'll start with you, Neil. What What do you think? A first goal scorer and what on earth do you think is going to happen? Forget Brexit. What do you think is going to happen with Leicester <laughs> this week? Yeah, that's, that, that'll be another an hour and a half if you want to talk about that. Um, I don't. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, it got thrown off by that then. Uh, yeah, think... sorry, score predictions. First goal score, great final score. Uh, I think 2-1. I can see it conceding in the first half again. But I think we can we can scrape back and we can win it. But I think a 2-1 with, let's say, Madison again for his nice three in a row, that'll be quite good. Tom, what's your, what's your feelings for this Saturday? Are you looking forward to it? Yeah, I'm, I'm going positive, as I said earlier, with a team without Zaha and one of their best, best centre-halves in Tompkins and quite a few, you know, they've got a very lot of injuries. I'm going 3-0. Or 3-0, Madison and then Nacho to get a couple to get his confidence up. I really feel we can go to Palace where we've got quite a good record over the years and get a good result at the weekend and uh, get back to winning race. I'm going to going to bring out a few comments before I let you guys go. Uh, Kev Carwright is saying, surely do what's best for the club, bring... Drinky back. I would totally agree with that. Does Pugh want a player like Drinky in the team? Fast mm. counter-attack in play versus slow build-up. Pugh has shown us that he can he can get the team to play this fast attacking play, so there's no reason not to. James Hall is saying we'll win on Saturday to keep Pugh's job. Michael Geddes is saying we'll lose 3-0. Mick's back here. Mick Padgett is 3-1 to City win. Richie Collins is saying 3-1 to City against Palace. Shawnee B is saying sack Pule, hopefully. Neil Bennett. I think I'd just rather have 
Shawnee, I'd rather just have Leicester win, if I'm honest. <laughs> than uh, Madison and 3-0, yeah. says Neil Bennett. Uh, Martin is saying Palace will win. If Vardy does not play, then it's 0-0. Julie Field is saying 2-1 to City. Think of Palace two years ago. What a great day that was, <laughs> says Neil Barakoff. Yes, how quickly it changes. 2-1 win, says Anthony Howard, with Nacho getting the goal. Steve Marston is saying Palace and 2-1 to Leicester. It's going to be a tough game and I think Okazaki should start. Ian Peach is saying Palace nil, Leicester 1. Damari Gray to score. Judy Field is saying that Morgan will score. Baz is saying 3-0 for the Foxes and Nacho Hattrick. There you go, I said it. That's what we like. That's what we like, Baz. Good effort from Baz there. Dan Hall is saying 1-0 tight game. John Bate, mostly, most people are going to put a few more on screen here. Most people are predicting, are going for a Leicester win. Um, you know, I think, I think guys, there's been quite, I've been quite pleased tonight. There's been yeah. a fair amount of positivity in the comments, which has been really good. Tom, do you want to sum up your feelings on what has been, what was a funny post-match after the Spurs and yesterday? Yeah, I mean, like, like I said earlier, I, I, I just think we've got to be a bit more realistic. Yes, the Premier League win was amazing and the Champions League success was fantastic. But I think some of the expectations of the fans need to come down a peg or two at the moment. Look, we all want to be that team that's pushing into where uh, top them are and up the league as far as we can. But for me, if we're, if we're finishing seventh for the next couple of seasons, it means we're building and it gradually will get to those positions. But I can promise you now, top will not sack pure while we're ninth in the Premier League. We're nowhere near the relegation zone. The chances of getting relegated are probably 5,000 to 1 uh, because, for me, there's five teams that are a lot, lot worse than us in this division. If you look at it, Southampton, Burnley, uh, Cardiff, you know, Fulham, these teams down there, we're not going to get dragged into these, this relegation battle at any point this season. We will get enough points on the board to stay in the division. At the end of the season, if we've not had a good enough year, yes, Pule probably will leave the football club because top will look to build. But I don't see the point of sacking a manager for the sake of sacking him. When everyone keeps saying about just go and buy, get Rafa Benitez, just go and get him, why would they want to leave Newcastle to come to Leicester? No offence. Newcastle, 57,000 fans week in, week out, passionate fans who back the team. The problem they've got is they've got an own, owner who doesn't want to back them. So at the moment, why have we got a manager who wants to be here? Let's just back him until the end of the season and then see what our chairman, or future chairman, hopefully, in top wants to do with the football club. He chose to bring him here, the chairman did. So, for me, just stick up, you know, stick with the lad for the time being. To see comments of some of our fans want us to lose games just so Pugh will get sacked, that's quite sad, really. There shouldn't be a divide <laughs> at the moment. It, we should be backing them. Everyone should be backing Leicester to win every game. We know we're not going to happen, but let's just back the lad till the end of the season and then see where we're at at the end of it with the points on the board. Neil, do you sort of echo Tom's views there? Yeah, and you can tell by just the way we look at the, at the table at the moment. And there's kind of the bottom half, there's a bottom team of like relegation in and out people with your your Cardiffs, your, uh, your your Burnley, Southampton, and we could be in that, but we're not. And there's we're in the next group, the tier up between like maybe twelfth and sixth, which is still brilliant. And with with Man United, with um, with Watford, with other teams that are actually decent, then, then between those two team there's a big gap and how much we would we have loved to have been in this with the year we were in the great escape season to be in this position and to to have been in like the top sense we would have been absolutely over the moon but two years later that's no longer good enough and you just the way you see the fans commenting it it, yeah. it, it, it it's it's incredible if you think about it and you wouldn't have believed that the fans would react like that in ninth place with a quarter uh, with a quarter final uh, so you think thinking... well, there I, we go. Neil, I think this season is absolutely shaping up to be a cup season for Leicester. We're going to be mid-table or higher mid-table, top half of the table this season, fairly comfortably. We'll look back at the end of this season, I think, and go, crikey, if only we'd have picked up more points against Fulham uh, and West Ham Palace. We could have done. We could have really, we could have got into... Europe, we could have finished in the top six or seven, maybe. That's how mm. I think we're going to look back at missed chances. But I fancy us in the cup. This is a cup season. The Man City game against them in the quarterfinal is is massive for me because that's the one where we put out our best team. We have a packed king power and we really go for that. And yeah. we beat Man City. We're in a semi-final and we get to Wembley. That's 
Yeah, that's my I logic. Yeah, I can see it, and just putting off. And Powell saw the mistake. We had we had the literally identical fixture um, last season at home. He didn't put the full team out. He saw what Man City team he put out, and it and we he he needs to make the mistake and go full team. If Farley's fit, Absolutely. get him in, get Maguire in, and just smash it. And yeah. you could tell, yeah, we're getting excited about it. But we can we can do this with a quarter final with the last eight. Like if this is the World Cup, this is really impressive. So we've got the opportunity, and it's at home, so I can see the fans going, "Come on, let's get this, let's do this for Vichai for the whole for the year for for the just the celebration kind of thing for, for winning a cup. That would be pretty awesome. But yeah, we just need to go and just smash it in every way we can. And again, that just, not just for that, just for the just for the club in general to kind of just give a celebration of of our club and our city and, and togetherness and because there's been too much division recently and it, it's been really horrible to watch to be perfectly honest as a fan and to mark the the comments been really quite good as you were saying today it's been really quite nice and um i think we can do i think we can do it as well i think we can do a cup run and it just it just seemed so it just seemed after after the passing of Ichai, it just seemed like this is something we could do and this is the way to do it Brilliant. Thanks, Neil, for joining us. I'm going to let you go and I'm going to read the comments out and finish up the show. So thanks a lot, Neil. And thanks to Tom, who I think we've lost his signal. But cheers, guys. Yeah. Thanks, Phil. Thanks, everyone. So that's Neil and Tom both gave us their views. I'm going to give you, I've put on the screen, back Leicester City. Lots of people are saying yes, of course. Um, it supports Premiership, says uh, Michael Geddes, apart from the top six, which is absolutely right. It is similar to that. Uh, it's four years later from the greatest escape season, says Imtiaz. We need to get behind the club, says Sam Ferrar. It's been possibly the hardest months in the club's history. Hopefully we are out of the tough times. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, James Hall, I'll see you, James, next Tuesday at 10 o'clock because James is saying not a chance we'll beat Man City. It's not going to be packed. I can tell you that now. There are tickets left on sale. James, I'm pretty sure it will be packed come next Tuesday. And I, for one, am very confident that we are going to beat us. And James, if we don't, you can put me right. But I tell you what, I absolutely fancy to beat Man City in the Cup. For a start, why on earth are Man City interested in the League Cup? The honest answer is they're not. They're going to put out the kids. They're playing the Champions League. They're going for the League. They've probably got the FA Cup. They will not be fussed about the League Cup. Uh, is it true Leicester have got the youngest team in the league, says Wesley? I don't know the answer to that. But Mick Padgett says, yes, Wesley. Thanks, Mick. Mick's like my PA at the moment, sorts out all the answers, which is great. Uh, John Lamy is saying sack Rudkin. First one we've had there. Phil, have you been drinking, says Andy Medhurst. No, I just think we're going to win the League Cup this year. We love the League Cup. I love the League Cup. And I think this is our year to win it. Uh, should have beat Man City last year. No fear of them. Totally agree, Steve. We should have beat them last year. If only we put out the first team last year, we would have beaten them. 2-0 uh, and Vardy to score the winner, says John Barnes. Bain. Sorry, John. Don't know if that's against Crystal Palace or Man City. Uh, Ian Peach is saying Foxes will win on penalties. Danny Ward be our hero again. You wouldn't bet against it, would you, Ian? I tell you, we are going to win that league cup this year it's got our name on it some years you just feel it in your blood i think the league we're going to finish in the mid table and you'll probably still be arguing about pule in and pule out till the final day of the season but i tell you what if we go to uh, wembley in february and win the league cup and have a day out and finish mid or heart top half of the table that for me is a cracking season I'm going to check. I've, I've followed Leicester for over 40 years since I was a five-year-old kid. I'm going to check how many of those seasons we were in League Two, how many seasons we were in League... I must get this right. Division Two or the Championship or the Premier League or, as it was, Division One. And I know we were only in League One as it is now for one season. But I think, generally, we've been in the old Division Two or the Championship way more years in my lifetime than the Premier League. So top half of the Premier League in my Leicester City supporting years is lovely jubbly. Thank you very much. I'll take it week in, week out. The odd chance at Wembley. I love the Champions League. Love going away in Europe. I don't take it again, but we can do that via a League Cup. Mid-table, top half, League Cup win, FA Cup win, something like that. 
that is almost as good as it gets being a Leicester fan. We've all seen that it can get better. But for me, that's pretty much what it is. Mick Padgett is saying, remember the League Cup is a route into Europe. It's the easiest way, Mick. It's the easiest way. We beat Man City in the quarterfinals. We beat whoever we play in the semifinals. We get to a League Cup final, have a great day out at Wembley. And we get to Europe and we win a cup. Ian Peach saying any cup will do me. I think the cup will be the honouring of Vichai from us all. It'll be the day out. And that's that's why it's written in the stars. I just feel it in the waters. And, we, and that's why I say we'll beat Man City. Sometimes you just feel these things are destined. And I do think... That is what's going to happen this season. Anyway, listen, thank you so, so much to everybody who has been putting their comments in. It's been absolutely tremendous. Loads and loads of views. Thanks for Neil and thanks for Tom. Thanks as ever. I have to point upwards to Peter's Pizzas, ADT, Taxes, Everard's and Hologram and the Fox's Arms. Thanks to all those guys who help us do everything at 100%. John Baines is beating me. He's been following Leicester for 49 years. Well, John, how many of those were in the Premier League and how many in the Championship? That's the big question. We've either been, says Sam Perkins, we've either been in the second division and bottom half of the first division throughout most of our history. That's it. So the, so the seasons when we're in the top half of the Premier League, it's lovely to play. I keep saying that. Oh, I can't read all that out. But thanks, Joe Smith, say, talking about Vardy. Anyway, I'm going to let you go from me, Phil. Keep it tuned to 100% LCFC. Keep tuned for all Lee Chappie's work and podcasts. Uh, Jamie on Sunday and Anthony, all the other guys who go live. From me, Phil, like and share this video and we'll see you soon.